Talk about finishing, I know one, one term that a consumer may not be familiar with is the term feed yard. And so if we were talking about a feed yard and trying to describe that, how would you describe a feed yard? I heard it described uh, interestingly the other day. It said it was like a big zoo. Uh, animals are put in there, they're cared for daily, but people that have their best interest, the nutrition is uh, developed by professional nutritionists, trained nutritionists, they have uh, attending veterinarians that overcheck the health of those cattle on a daily basis as well. And people are designated within the operation to go look at every animal every day. And so it's, it's an area where we put animals in. They are confined, but they're not confined to the point that a lot of people think they are. Uh, they have the ability to express normal behavior, do all the things they want to do, particularly in our cattle feed lots in Texas, are big open lots for the most part. The cattle can run and play and buck and act silly if they want to, and they do. If people actually go and watch them, they actually express all their normal behavior, which is a concern to a lot of consumers. They are delivered uh, feed two to three times a day, a very high quality nutritious diet that's balanced for protein, energy, vitamins, minerals, and everything else. And in that process, then we try to get them to eat uh, no more than, we don't want them to eat so much they get sick. We can all do that too. <laughs> and so they limit the amount they can eat based on what they need on a daily basis. So it's, it's just an area where we can improve efficiencies by having a concentrated feed uh, preparation. Uh, it's one reason we have cafeterias versus every child having their own cook station at, at school. We can prepare that meal in a central location and have them all fed in one location. And so there's certain things we can do to improve our efficiencies, and that's one reason the feed yards were developed. So when you talk about feed yards in Texas, um, and we're, we're kind of in East Texas this morning, where, where are the feed yards in Texas? There's one primary location, and that would be in the Panhandle region of Texas, South Plains and the Upper Panhandle. One, it's a better feeding environment, it's less humid, uh, there's normally a breeze that keeps the cattle cool while they're in the yards. They don't get a lot of rainfall, so there's not much mud. Uh, they have a very unique situation in the Panhandle with Playa Lakes, where you don't have a discharge from that area, so any runoff is held in that area, so you don't have the, the problem with contamination of streams. And that's something about feedlots, you do have to control all the runoff in those confined feeding operations. We do have another pocket of feeders in South Texas, uh, South San Antonio down toward Corpus. Uh, there's not a lot of them down there, but there's smaller yards, but normally 10 to 40,000 head yards. You know, anytime you get that many animals together, there's going to be a lot of uh, manure to, ma to manage. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that they've put a lot of emphasis on that now. The feed yards have figured out that they can take that manure, collect it, compost it, and then sell it in gardening and everything else, and it's a very high quality organic fertilizer. Uh, so they, there's a lot of reasons now that they do pay a little more attention to that, maybe even than they did in the past, but that has become a income stream. And there's no way to get organic fertilizer without collecting it somewhere. But the composting facilities, a lot of them are doing that on site now, and so it's added additional incentive to, to do that. But the cattle also perform better and their health stays better if you keep that environment clean. So that's why they started doing it. They just figured out a way to then market what they, they have there. Uh, the health of the cattle is of the utmost importance. If they do not stay healthy, they will never express their genetic ability to gain, produce high quality meat. They, if they get sick, they'll never grade as high, or on average they won't grade as high as they would if they'd never gotten sick. So our objective is to keep an animal from not ever getting sick. So we've talked about the health of the animals at the feed yard, and I would, I would guess that there are really specialist veterinarians, nutrition specialists that really provide, help provide some oversight as well to those right. feed yards. Every feed yard will have an, a, a consulting veterinarian. Some of them will actually have a veterinarian on staff that stays there and works there all the time. But the smaller yards may have a consulting vet that will have several, because the problems are pretty similar across all of them, so they can make recommendations and monitor several yards at once. But they're, they are professionals at what they do. They understand the, the nuances around health issues in a feeding operation. And so they can prepare the people who go check cattle what to look for. And then they have recommendations and protocols on how to treat different illnesses they might find. Because it's not all respiratory. There's other things that can come in, into play. So those veterinarians are in charge of not only 
making protocol for treatment, but also management recommendations uh, to try to alleviate some of those problems from occurring. On the other side, then you also have the nutritionist, uh, because it is a cafeteria, everybody needs a dietitian or a nutritionist, right? And so we have a, every feed, feedlot has a nutritionist that prepares the rations based on the weight, weight and type of cattle. And, and so those nutritionists look at the age of the animal, how fast they need to grow, uh, any potential digestive issues, and then they try to work with the veterinarian then because the good nutrition prevent a lot of health issues and vice versa. And so they have to balance those two out and work together in the feed yard to make the health of the animal as good as it can possibly be.